welcome to another episode of Digital Diary, Adventures of a Computerized Sculptor. I'm Christine Perigo, and I'm here today with Karen Farnsworth, Georgia Stahl, and Paige Johnson. So today we're going to take a look at some of those modern quilting trends, and we're going to start by taking a look at some of the trends that we noticed out at QuiltCon this year. I like this. I wasn't able to attend any shows. So many people haven't. Uh, Quil QuiltCon is traditionally modern, and I'm anxious to see what they did. Yes. Hey Amen. <laughs> I'm I I do a little bit of modern quilting, but I'm certainly not at the forefront. So I'm excited for Christine to kind of <laughs> give us some ideas of what the trends are and what's happening out there. Exactly. Okay, so I did travel down to Phoenix this last year, um, where QuiltCon was. QuiltCon is the qu quilt show and convention for modern quilts and modern quilting. So let's take a quick look. The best in show this year was actually sponsored by Gamel. Yay. Um, and it was actually made by a good friend of mine. I've quilted for her in the past but her name is Hillary Goodwin. And this quilt shows an awful lot of the trends that we're seeing in modern quilting. Um, it is all hand quilted, so no machine quilting at all. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Um, and a lot of the fabrics that she used were basically reclaimed materials. So she's an ER doctor. So a lot of these fabrics came from beddings, linens, scrubs, that sort of thing. Uh, and so we're seeing a lot of hand quilting in our modern quilts, and we're seeing a lot of reclaimed fabrics. We're trying to focus on sustainability in a lot of our quilting trends, and so there's a big focus around that. So the story that goes with these quilts, it's always important. Uh, Absolutely. But this is something that's different than you see in your tr traditional quilt shows. Ooh. Absolutely. And it, it, she created her own paper piecing design and applique all of those teardrops on. And then there's a whole lot of text in the background. So um, she had that 2020 as text in the quilting itself. So another good trend is lots of text. So it, this quilt really represents a lot of those trends that we are seeing in the modern quilting movement. Well, I've already learned something. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn, Karen? I, I, I had no idea that the modern trends were moving that direction. So yeah, yeah I'm loving this. The hand quilting surprises me. There's a ton of hand quilting. She actually has invested in a frame to hand quilt. So. <laughs> okay. So let's move on. So this was the best machine quilting on a framed machine. Um, it happens to have been quilted by yours truly. So I actually got that award this year. Um, this is a group quilt that we worked on. Um, so she wanted to have, she had the person that created this quilt. Um, was born and raised in New Zealand and she wanted to have all of that her heritage reflected in this quilt and so a lot of tattoo designs went into it and but yet keeping it modern at the same time was the challenge. So those curls are actually inspired by tattoos? Absolutely yep some of the aboriginal designs from New Zealand. That's amazing where you get your inspiration. Absolutely. That's a good one. See, and I love the use of the lines uh, because it really highlights those specific designs, the curls, the tattoos. Absolutely. Because if you used any other type of fill or background work, you really wouldn't see it as well. And it wouldn't look as modern. Yep. You'll always see straight line quilting when, you, when we talk about modern quilts. It's an integral part of it. Um, so just let's take a quick look at this. So there's a picture of me with it, but I put um, a picture on the screen of my screenshot from Creative Studio, just so that you can actually see how much of this quilt was really done digitally from my Statler. Um, 
And I think this is really one of the first quilts that's won that type of an award at this kind of level that's fully digital quilting. Awesome. Well, I like to see computerized quilting, obviously. <laughs> For obvious reasons, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on. I put, only pulled one other group of quilts. So these are the quilts that won first, second, and third in the piecing category, but they really speak to a lot of the other trends that I see going on in the modern world as well. Um, we're seeing a lot of portraiture, so lots of pictures of people and that sort of thing, but very, keeping it very abstract. Um, I have a I have a question on that one because okay. yeah, I'm always worried about the color of the thread. Now the straight line quilting on that portrait really does work, but what was did they change the color of the thread when they went into the different pieces? No, it just went all over the whole quilt. Okay. I kind of gives it a shaded kind of tone. Mm -hmm. So what color was it? Do you um, remember? I don't quite remember. I think it was kind of that peachy yellow kind of color. Okay. Yep. Um, but the other thing, all three of these quilts um, had straight line piecing or quilting. So mm -hmm. the one with the portraits had straight line quilting, the blue one in the middle, straight line quilting. And my big dark belt cut quilt it had matchstick straight line quilting. Um, and you'll see that straight line quilting a lot in modern quilting. And a lot of it specifically with the piecing is to highlight that piecing. Like Karen said, kind of those straight lines let your eye see other things. And yeah. So that's really what a lot of that is about. Yeah, it's the contrast that really causes the you know, the design to pop out and jump out at you. And it makes them flatter. Uh, now, is that a trend in modern quilting, denser quilting? Oh, absolutely. You'll see lots of dense quilting. And most of the times you'll have open seams. And so those quilts are very flat. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have pressed open seams and straight line matched up quilting, that quilt is going to be as flat as it can be. Mm -hmm. See, that's un interesting because I don't want the pressed open seams because they tend to, well, first of all, you can't ditch them, but that would be more traditional. <laughs> right. Modern. I'm yep. learning stuff. Yay. <laughs> okay. So let's kind of move away from the quilt con trend. And the big thing with modern quilts is modern quilts kind of live on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And so this is a couple of shots from my Instagram feed. So the first one over here with the clamshells, we have, again, straight line quilting that I just used my channel locks for. So I didn't have to set up digital patterns. Um, and then here's another example of some of my quilting where I went and created this edge-to-edge -edge design specifically for this quilt. I was going to ask you if that was an edge-to-edge -edge because I think all of the modern quilts that I've quilted, and I haven't done that many, but I do quilt for customers and they'll ask for a modern look and it's always with an edge-to-edge. -edge. Yep. If you keep an edge-to-edge -edge design that's fairly geometric, you'll probably stay pretty well in that modern vein. Mm -hmm. And um, shrink it down, obviously. Yes, very dense, definitely. Right. Um, the okay. other thing I wanted to talk about while we're here is hashtags. So this <laughs> Gamble Quilting hashtag, if you want to share your work with us and show us all of your amazing quilting, make sure you include that Gamble Quilting hashtag and we could possibly feature your quilting as well. Ooh. Awesome. I know I underutilize hashtags and Instagram for that matter, but I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better at that. That's all right. Got it. <laughs> we'll go. So Georgia, here's a couple from your Instagram feed. Yep. Yeah. Two favorites. And, you know, I, some, some customers, they just, they want that modern look and most of them still want the, 
um, you know, the edge to edge price and, and you can do it. So that and tool I, on the, on the right, I guess for me, so with um, the triangle piecing it so easily, I, I mean, it's modern because of the design that was quilted on it, but it's so easily, if you put, put if you'd put a, like a floral or something like that, or a feather on there, it would have looked more traditional. It would definitely right. not have looked as modern with a different right. type of design. So and what's me, the key with yeah. this design that makes it modern looking, the quilting I think design? It's the denseness, look at the denseness of it and the repetition, how it circles around. And, you know, right. when I first started doing the, I, I wasn't sure I really liked modern at first, but one thing I always teach is when you buy patterns, don't only buy patterns that you love <laughs> because your customers might like something else. And so I sort of push myself into buying some of the modern patterns because that's who was coming into my studio. And now I love it. I love the denseness. I love the, you know, the, I, I mean, it's, it's just a very precise look, a little bit different than feathers, say. Yeah. Well, and both of these bring up one of those interesting things with a lot of modern edge to edge designs. A lot of them are deeply nested. Very. Um, the, the one on the left, when you nest it, a portion on the right side actually has to go up into, you actually pass over part of the row above. So, and that for some people that doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you don't, it doesn't nest into the right position. Well, we're so, conditioned to think that if our rows overlap, that's a bad thing. But a lot right. of these designs are now created that they are supposed to overlap. Right. I love that. It gives the illusion that those pieces are kind of floating because exactly. each one is not connected to the one right next to it. Right. And you'll notice that up towards the top, when you're looking away, it has a different feel or look to it than the one that's on the bottom it mm -hmm. becomes more rounded softer and floating because mm -hmm. you can't your eye can't see how it's connected to the next piece that's a great choice of pattern okay so i have a couple more uh quilts from other instagram people so this is from jenna saxon um, so she does an awful lot of modern quilting, but you can see she used, this is actually, it happens to be one of my designs, um, but putting something that gives a little bit of movement to that quilt absolutely mm -hmm. changes the look of it. Um, and you can see she included a digital mock-up from Creative Studio in there as well. Being so able like to put your pattern over the picture really gives you a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, more people are doing it more and more. I, I see it out there as well. That's a good idea. So a lot of modern quilts have a lot of white space, right? And, and it might not be white fabric, but a lot of negative empty space. space. Negative space, yeah. there you go. A lot yeah. of negative space. And I love how this design, even though it is lines, so it's very modern and it's very clean and precise, the way you've created the design, you said this was one of yours, right? Yep. So the it way was. you created this gives it some, um, it gives it some interest because of that dimension. So yep. yeah, I like that a lot. Well, and this is one of those patterns, those designs that's created to be really long and wide. We're going to talk about them a little bit later, but that's one of the trademarks of modern quilting designs is you either have small little patterns that don't look like a lot or really big patterns that you can't tell what they are so and that's so that you can create a design that would be the entire row right so exactly okay so you get a different look so it doesn't have parts of like standard really repetitive repeats yep gotcha i have some designs like that too <laughs> yeah okay. i love the movement and depth in that Ooh. So this is another one from Instagram, um, Hand House Quilting, Ashley Perkins. Um, so again, things that you might notice in this, we do have lots of straight lines on a curved quilt. 
So mm-hmm. again, we're showing that there's a lot of that contrast, right? Yeah. Um, the other thing you might take note of is I love how in her posting, she actually posts who made the quilts, what the quilting design is, where it's from, and what the pattern of the quilt is itself. So when you're posting to social media, you can definitely put some of those details out there so that people, A, know what you're doing, and when customers come to you, they know what to request as well. Well, the other side of that is I found if I don't, 400 people go, what is the name of that quilting pattern? And so, you know, I mean, one of the jobs, she does great photography. And, you know, to me, that's one of the hardest parts. But, you know, we all know that everybody looks at that Statler page and the minute or that Instagram account and the minute they see some, that's the first question. Where, what is the name of that pattern? Where can I find it? So, exactly. Yeah. Great inspiration. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at a couple from Facebook. So you want to talk about these a little, Karen? Yeah, these are um, pretty simple, obviously, pretty obvious. But these were on the Statler Facebook group, I think, the Gamble Statler Facebook group. Um, And just more examples of how simple it is to take a, a simple piecing design And instead of going towards a floral or feather or, you know, other direction, you can make it modern. And this one, again, is straight lines. What I really like about this design, um, sometimes my problem is when I'm looking at a design that is made up of mostly straight lines. So I'm looking at the quilt top and this quilt top is nothing but straight lines, right? Um, The piecing. There's no, there's no circles in here. There's no curves there. It's all straight lines. And so I personally, when I'm quilting for customers, I struggle a little. I'm like, oh, I can't put horizontal or vertical lines on that because if the piecing isn't perfectly straight, it's very, very obvious, right? Yep, absolutely. But you take a design like this one with angled lines. <laughs> doesn't matter. And, right? And it looks fantastic. So yeah, yeah, I just really like the look she got with this project. I mean, the big thing here, again, is thread choices as well, because you you have a lot of these quilting, modern quilting designs where you have these sections with lots of dense thread. Mm -hmm. Depending on what thread you choose, that could make or break this design as well. Exactly. Thin thread. Yep, absolutely. Most modern quilts, especially with these really dense areas of quilting, are very Mm -hmm. fine thread. I saw this quilt, this picture on Facebook and contacted the quilter and um, asked if uh, we could maybe possibly talk about this quilt. And I actually have um, a little interview I did with this gal. So we're going to go over to the interview and talk to her for a second. Um, Carla, will you just uh, introduce yourself really quickly? Name, where you're from, what kind of machine you use? Sure. Um, my name is Carla Minucci. I have a Gamel Classic Plus um, 12 foot frame that was purchased in 2005 and I retrofitted to Statler last August. So yeah, it's been amazing. Love it. Can't wait to learn more. Um, we are from a very small community in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, probably about 3,000 people, very rural. So Carla, you, um, you recently posted a picture on one of the Facebook pages that I saw um, of a quilt that really kind of caught my attention. In fact, I'm going to share my screen so we can look at the picture of it here. Okay. Um, tell me when you can see the picture. Yes, now I do. All right. Yeah. So this is a quilt that you quilted for a customer. Is is that right? Correct. Um, she's a longtime customer and has just some really cool things. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to do something kind of funky and with lots of edgy lines. So, yeah. So I went on the hunt for the right pattern. <laughs> I think it's cleverly done. Good choice in pattern. Usually with a lot of the linear um, squares and that kind of stuff, I'll choose something more um, 
whimsical or circular to kind of break that up. But yeah, I, when I saw that particular pattern, I thought, oh, I'm going to use that. So yeah, thank you. On this particular quilt, I decided I really needed to practice on um, fill so and repeat pattern. So that's how I set it up. And um, I learned. <laughs> Um, anyway, thanks. Thanks for joining me today, Carla, and talking about your quilt and, um, you know, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> keep up the good Thank work. You. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have one more from our Facebook group. So one of the things I see in modern quilting, and you tell me if it's still a, a trend, is the use of, so monochromatic colors, right, with maybe just Absolutely. a pop of one or two yep. colors, right? So yep. we've got this beautiful piecing design with just a little bit of orange. Um, and then, but again, it's straight lines going in a couple of different directions on the piecing. And instead of doing an overall, this one is actually custom quilted, but it's just straight lines. So and yep. it's the direction of the lines that create um, the interest in this quilt. Yeah. Yeah, in the movement, nothing will move your eye more effectively than parallel lines. Straight lines really keep you moving in uh, the same direction. I really like how they switched up the direction of the lines here because you, you're constantly looking and going in different directions. Well, and you were talking about um, all the neutrals or all the mm -hmm. monochromatic colors and neutrals right now are a big trend in modern quilting as well so a lot of quilts out there are we're looking for natural dyes and a very neutral color palette with a pop of color somewhere and more solids or things that read solid from afar absolutely solids are always going to play in modern quilts which is why the quilting shows off so much absolutely it's just a quilt that caught my eye on the Facebook group and um, wanted to reach out, spoke with the quilter. She sent me some photos and actually um, got with me on a quick Zoom call. And so we can actually go in and um, I'm going to transition to show what we talked about um, with her. <laughs> uh, Sue, I saw a quilt that you posted um, not too long ago. I think you put it on like the Statler Facebook group, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think you're going to show it to us here a little bit and talk to us about it in a second. But will you first really quick, just uh, give us an introduction, like your name, where you're at, uh, what kind of machine you use? Sure. Uh, my name is Sue Malarvey. I live in Wisconsin on the peninsula, Wisconsin shaped like a hand. And there's a peninsula that jets out. And I'm right in the middle of that peninsula. So I have the waters of Green Bay on one side and Lake Michigan on the other side. So it's a beautiful area. It's known as Door County for um, those people that have probably visited. It's a high tourist area. Uh, there's lots of quilters, not very many long armors. And I'm one of them. I belong to a Trillium Quilt Guild for uh, probably a little over three years. And uh, a lot of my customers come from the guild. Uh, but they come from all over too because it's a small, small town and word of mouth is um, like fire. So <laughs> right. I've been very, I am very, very busy. I get, uh, I did 26 quilts in the last two weeks. Uh, so that's just kind of how my business goes. And I do custom along with a lot of edge to edge. So I'm in fussy on my custom because I only have the one machine, which is a, a Statler. Uh, I was going to say, I can see it there it's behind a 30 you. inch <laughs> optimum. Yeah, I need two <laughs> machines, but. Well, um, let's take a look at that quilt. We're talking about okay. modern quilting today. So I think All we're going right. to share that Well, my customer, Lynn, came in. She's a lovely, lovely lady. She's part of the guild. And she has the quilt because she immediately took it and gave it to her niece, who she made it for, who's going through cancer treatment. And she wanted it really quick because she unexpectedly started this uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. But if you can see, this is Lynn showing her beautiful quilt at the Guild and that's a snapshot of her. So that's the one who pieced it. Uh, she brought me 
the pattern picture. I don't know if you can get a good picture of that. And she said, could you quilt it just like this? And so. <laughs> right. Well, we can't really see the quilting on the screen, but but right. I know you've got pictures of so what so you did with it. She brought me the pattern and she said, I'm just going to leave it and just quilt it like that. So the picture, it was really hard to see, but it was all linear. And I thought, well, how hard can that be? You know, until I still <laughs> really started looking at the pattern and realized that in the squares here, they all seemed like they were one long line. So to line those up was like, oh boy, you know, how am I going to do that? So um, it didn't take long, but I figured it out and uh, used a piano key, one singular piano key in my repeat patterns and drew a boundary, you know, put the piano key up in the uh, upper left corner and um, set my height. And then I unlocked the um, total set and just added row and row and row and row. Then mm -hmm. of course I used a fill feature and that worked out really well because all of the space between the lines were consistent, which she wanted a half inch space. Perfect. So that's kind of how I did it. And it worked out really well. It only took me a day to do it. So basically what I did, this is the whole CAD system, is uh, drew a boundary like you see here and added lots and lots of roll and basically just hit my fill button. And that was mm -hmm. how it how it ended up. So like when I had two blocks to make sure they were in sync, I would, you know, just move them over to see that they fit, see how they fit nicely into sure. the other one. And then I knew it was good to stitch out. Did you have any trouble with shrinkage with that dense of a design? Not, no, not when I was doing block by block. Nice. You know, if I would have done four or five blocks together, yeah, I would have been nervous about it. And I probably would have stitched in the ditch. But these, um, to secure it a little bit more, but these are only a half inch apart. So I didn't stitch in the ditch at all. And it was very, very secure. Well, I really appreciate you showing the quilt and showing, you know, a little bit of the process that went into it. Well, very nice. Thank you for sharing your quilt with us. Thank you, Karen. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And Karen, you want to take us on a trip over to the Gamble Quilting Store to the Pattern Club? Absolutely. Yep, so I'm just looking at Creative Studio 7, and what I did was I just opened the store tab, and I do have an internet connection, so I was able to see the store patterns, and then did a search for modern designs, um, and then I went to advanced search and chose just edge to edge, because I wanted to show how many edge to edge patterns are out there that are tagged or uh, um, keyworded as modern designs. And there are currently 999 of those designs. So there are a few options out there for us as computerized quilters, designs that could work for um, modern quilting. Um, and so Christine already kind of brought up the, the topic or the idea that they come in you know, different shapes and sizes, and some of them are much more complex than others, um, like this mandala design. Wow. Turn off my grid here. I, and look how intricate that is. But wow. then we have other designs that are just lines, like our hex diamond. Um, some of these that are, let's go back to here, like this, um, this design right here, so incredibly that simple. That's simple, similar to what you were using on that one quilt, right, Georgia? It, it is, exactly. And, and it's and, just amazing. If you don't play with it, you don't realize how interesting it is because of how simple it is. But when you put it together, wow. Well, and that's the thing. So, so that's this design probably requires some very significant um, uh, negative vertical spacing, right? Nesting in yeah. order for it to kind of look its best. Exactly. Absolutely. But that's, um, that's the benefit we have with Creative Studio. 
and the store is that we can actually play with these designs. You saw I was able to drag one over to the screen so that I can, you know, kind of look at it closer. I can see where the starts and ends are if I turn on my options. Um, I can go, let me turn on my options. <laughs> show all options so I can see where the start and end of that design is. Um, and then where was that one we were looking at up oh, right here. So our half square, I could even do something like um, use repeat patterns or edge to edge, whatever mode I wanted to. And then just set up some repeats and rows to see how that pattern relates to itself, right? So I can right. see some repeats, see some rows. Um, and that looks okay, but I'm going to guess that a negative vertical spacing, and I'm just taking a guess here because I haven't played with this design. Let's go two inches. Oh, wow. I guessed pretty well. I always start with half of what half. the height <laughs> Right. <laughs> there we go. It I mean, looks a whole cool lot different. Yeah, right? It's a lot totally denser. So before you even take the plunge and purchase a design, you can play with it in Creative Studio to be sure that it's it's going to be able to, to work for your project and right. i just love that um well and if you scroll down karen you'll see some of those other really right. white patterns that we i knew that's about, where we were right? going next yep yeah so we have some of the and you can't you can't see what that is from here right you can see that no, it is a design that probably is designed to cover the entire row so it's designed as one repeat makes a row so let's just drag the first one over here. Oh, whoa. we need to give ourselves some more space. Awesome pattern. Right? I've used this set before. It's, it's really a lot of fun. It is. I have it too. So obviously this type of a design is going to require a different type of setup. Um, it doesn't even repeat. You can see the start is at the top and the end is at the bottom. Um, there's a jump stitch in there, but that's okay because the pattern is actually designed to just fit the entire width of a quilt, right? Yep, so yep. you can set it up visually, you know, rubber stamping, you can set it up with repeat patterns, um, you know, whatever your method is and then, and then trim or fill. I really, I'm sure Christine's going, no, not trim. <laughs> well, actually, I'm saying not necessarily fill with these patterns, just because really? if you try to do a fill, you might get one of those, it goes all the way across the quilt. Ah, okay, yeah. so there you go. So, you know, practice, play with your trim and fill or what, you know, whatever, just play with it to, to get the setup you want. But um, Well, you can divide it. There is oh, one, sure. I divide. divide it and then tr uh, do a fill on each absolutely but there that takes go. a little more effort yep i think yep. the point is that there are different types of patterns and yep. there are different ways to deal with them and um, but it's fun just go out and have fun with it right <laughs> so that's all i wanted to show on the store is i mean look at all of the options you've got i didn't even scroll down even through the first page and look at all the fun things we found to look for so you well, could narrow your search down even more if you wanted to well, you just brought something up for me. I saw one in there that I thought, oh, this would be good for a quilt that I don't have yet, but it's coming in. And if I ever see something like that, I tag it as uh, to put it on my wish list. Right. So that I don't buy everything that I think I want. Right. Well, and one of the other nice things is if you liked it a lot and you bought it one day, and then later you wanted to go buy it again. It goes, oh no, you already have this one. Yep. I really appreciate that. It tells you that a lot. <laughs> so we get the pop-up, we have more information about the pattern. You can even go to Pattern Cloud and put it in your shopping cart, or you could purchase it from here, but you can also set it as a favorite. So, yep, like you said, we can save it for later. That's what Paige said. <laughs> So we don't forget what we were looking at because there are a few patterns to see on, on pattern cloud. Yeah. And to find that one again, that's the hard part. So <laughs> it's good to have it saved. All right. I'm going to stop my screen share. Okay. Uh, so I, I really liked all of that. I liked the discussion of the trends and I 
of course, enjoyed looking at all the patterns on Pattern Cloud on the store. That's fun. Um, but I have a question for you, Christine, specifically for you, but for all you gals. Um, I think, if I'm not wrong, you have got some classes uh, like on modern quilting, specifically on Gamel's website, right? On Gamel Education? I do. So I have one that's specific to just modern quilting. Um, it's my uh, whole quilt blueprint class for modern quilts, where we actually take a modern quilt into that custom realm and talk about some of the ways that you can tackle some of those really big kind of designs that tend to be modern. And I actually have a quilt pattern that you can go and make and play with and some designs that I give you um, in Creative Studio that you can go and lay out on top of them and play with. But you'll find even though it, if that modern quilt class is not necessarily for you, some of my other classes do have a lot of that modern look and feel to them as well. So like techniques that you could certainly use to custom quilt a modern quilt. Absolutely. So okay. my Simple Clicks Powerful Tools class is out there as well. And a lot of the patterns that we end up designing in that class are fairly modern. So, yep. But the techniques can work on just about any. Gotcha. So for anybody that is ready to kind of, you know, move on from edge to edge on a modern quilt and kind of move into the custom realm. Yeah, Christine's pretty much your gal. <laughs> find, find a Christine class. <laughs> but, it, you know, if you're still working with repeat patterns or edge to edge, but you want to go, you know, with a modern flair, we have edge to edge and repeat pattern classes as well. So absolutely. And just keep in mind that those modern designs look so different when you put them in lots of negative vertical spacing, lots of nesting. And there's definitely some techniques and tricks that you probably want to pick up from those classes to learn how to deal with that deeply nested and highly dense design quilt as well. Okay, so we've taken a whole look at a lot of the modern quilting trends out there, not only at modern quilt shows, but what we're actually seeing on social media and on the store and how you can actually go ahead and put some of these modern trends to use in your quilting. So go ahead and look for another episode of Digital Diary and we'll see you again next time. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.